Ahoy! If you're a new or returning player to New World, then it can be hard to find up-to-date information on how to get started. A lot of previous advice no longer applies, and even my own guide, which I only made two weeks ago, already requires a significant update, which is what you're watching right now. Fortunately, things are pretty similar for both new and returning players at this point. So we're going to start off with a quick section for new players here, but there will be timestamps on the video and I also put a timestamp at this point to tell you where to skip to if you're a returning player. If you're a new player, you have three different options. The first one is simply play through the main quest line. Paired with a few side quests here and there, that's absolutely sufficient to get you to level 60, the max level now. Other methods are either too inefficient or cost too much gold, and you will likely want to have that gold when the expansion comes around. If you want to level your gathering skills along the way is up to you. You can do that at level 60 easier because mobs are less of a threat, but on the other hand, if something is already next to you, you might as well pick it up. I'd probably at least level skinning. You're killing a lot of animals along the way anyway, so might as well pick that stuff up and get some extra XP. This is the pathway that you should choose if you want to be ready for the expansion right as it drops. Alternatively, if you want to level at a slower pace and have a better questing experience, you can level until around level 40-ish, because the Great Cleave questline rework and the Eden Grove rework is coming in the expansion patch. You would, however, not be level 60 when the expansion drops if you do that. And as a third option, you can choose to only level up to level 25, because that is when mounts unlock in the expansion, which will make everything afterwards a little bit quicker. This, of course, has the same downside as option 2. And that brings us to the things beyond level 60, so from this point onwards, everything also applies for you returning players. Things have changed drastically. With the expansion, expertise, or what was once watermark, is going away. So high-level mobs will simply drop high-level loot, or high gear score loot. As such, at this point, there isn't really much benefit in doing the whole expertise farm. Likewise, it seems that Umbral Shards will be going away, so grinding towards them also won't be beneficial. And we also don't know what will happen to Gypsum. So what should you do instead? The first thing I would recommend doing is getting some gear. Sure, you will get very good gear with higher gear score in the expansion, but you still probably don't want to go into the next zone with 500 gear score. The mobs could hurt a little bit too much. The laziest way is to just buy cheap gear from the trading post with more than 590 gear score. Just good enough to carry you over in the expansion until you have something better. This gear will no longer be downscaled once the expansion comes around, so you can then use it with full effectiveness. There is a free and better alternative though, which is the Season Quest. You can find one of the starting points for this in the southeast of Rimson Sands. Completing this questline will give you a full set of medium 615 gear score gear with full constitution. You can use this immediately for any activities right now and you can definitely use this once the expansion drops. Some of the perks will change in the expansion because for example Beast Ward will be removed, but it should be good enough again to carry you over until you have something better. The questline also comes with some other useful rewards like weapons, so it's absolutely worth doing. Additionally, I would recommend doing the Brimstone Sands main story questline, at least until a certain point. Through that, you can unlock your Heart Rune slot, which is similar to an ultimate ability. It's kind of an extra weapon to some degree with a very long cooldown. It is possible that the expansion will unlock this for everyone without having to do the questline, but I'd rather be safe than sorry here. The Brimstone questline is a continuation of the main story questline and also gives you other 615 gear score weapons, so I think it's worth doing in general. If there's an active world event while you're watching this video, these are typically also worth doing. For example, while I'm making this video, the Siege of Sulphur is still active and you can get pretty good rewards from that. It is possible that they might sneak in another surprise event before the expansion. If they do so, then you will usually hear about it in recruitment chat. Next, let's talk about farming things, gold as well as resources. I will have a huge trading tip video tomorrow, so consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you want to get notified of that. If you want to get those trading tips before everyone else, then consider supporting me on Patreon, where I've already posted them. But I will of course give you a quick and basic breakdown here as well. The main thing that you can get right now are any kinds of trade skill related resources. The expansion increases the trade skill cap from 200 to 250, so a lot of people will want to craft new things. Based on how Newell's gathering system and crafting system works in general, it's very likely that the next tier of resources we can craft will still require the previous resources as well. And you know what people don't want to do when they are exploring a new zone with new content? Go back to old zones and farm low-level resources like iron or star metal, for example. There's a good chance there will be more demand than there's supply, and that will drain the market very quickly, which will lead to a lot of these resources going up in price a lot. 
So if you're running around gathering different resources, of course, level your trade skills if you want to, but don't sell anything anymore. Instead, keep those resources and sell them when the expansion comes around. If you run into issues with your storage, I would recommend upgrading to a maximum of tier 4 resources like Star Middle or Wordwood, because those will still be wanted for people who want to increase their trade skills for refining in the expansion. If you're desperate for money, I would recommend selling the attribute mods that you get from gathering various resources, like for example Softwood Tree Sap, which goes for a decent price because it can be converted into other craft mods. I would highly recommend holding onto any resources with unusual, abnormal or strange in their name, like for example Pollen, Strange Pollen. In the expansion you'll only be allowed to use three of them per day because they will allow you to advance the gathering skills a fair bit quicker. When gathering resources, I would generally recommend doing so PvP flagged. This is not some trap to lure you into being a prey in the open world, but rather because most people in the open world simply don't PvP in 1v1 situations anymore. The benefit of being PvP flagged is that you have increased gathering luck, and this can for example help you get these unusual, abnormal and strange resources. Thanks to Mixologic who actually checked the files and confirmed this for me. Of course, you do run the risk of somebody attacking you who has much better gear, but I think the odds are not very high these days. Most high-level players don't really run around gathering. This may change closer to the expansion, so choose for yourself. Likewise, I would not recommend spending gold for resources that aren't beneficial to the expansion in some way. If you know what you're spending on, go for it. But for example, I wouldn't recommend overspending on various kinds of gear at the moment when the gear will expire very quickly. We don't know how the value of gold will change with the expansion, it could be that there's some degree of inflation introduced by quest rewards giving much more gold or the gold cap being increased, we'll have to find out about that, but I think it's not a bad idea to have at least a little bit of gold in your pocket. Now let's quickly talk about another farm, which are elite chest runs. These used to be a big deal to increase your expertise, but they have uses outside of that. You can get various crafting resources here, you can get golden scarabs, which might still be useful in the expansion, we don't know about that, uh, various general resources as well that can be useful, and you can get transmog tokens. They might not be the most efficient and beneficial thing you can do right now, but they are an easy thing to do where you just follow a crowd and loot some chests. In order to find out if a run is happening on your server, keep an eye out for the word ECR in recruitment chat. It might be beneficial to level some of your crafting trade skills to 200, since the devs have talked about introducing bind on pickup gear from crafts that will be very powerful, that will allow you to lock a lot of perks. It is confirmed that by combining certain rare resources in the expansion, you will be able to craft a full best in slot gear piece. But based on what the devs have said in the past, it sounds very very likely that this piece will be bind on pickup, so you can only craft it for yourself. Leveling crafting trade skills is also significantly easier and cheaper than it used to be. When crafting an item for the first time, you get a triple XP multiplier, so if you craft a variety of different items, you can level very very quickly. I will link a crafting calculator down below for the best pathway to 200, but keep in mind that by default it doesn't factor in the triple bonus that you can get by crafting various different items. On the PvP side, there are also a few things that you can prepare. First off, there is a resource called Azoth Salt now, which you get for various PvP related activities. This salt can be used on the PvP track, which was recently overhauled and gives you much better rewards now. It is also confirmed that some of the artifacts, the best new gear in the game, will be from the PvP track in the expansion. Conveniently, you also gain this salt from being flagged in the open world and doing various activities. So if you're PvP flagged while gathering or fishing or something like that, you still end up getting Azoth Salt. That said, if you like PvP, I highly recommend trying out the new 3v3 arena map. We got that very recently and in my opinion it's a lot better than the old map and even performs better. Now you may be worried about the gear difference, but that's actually not as big of a deal as you would think, because in both arenas as well as Outpost Rush, there is a gear score normalization, so all of your gear will be leveled up to 600 gear score while you're in the mode. You're still at a slight disadvantage, but it's not nearly as bad as it seems, and with a lot of other new players coming back, you will have at least some even fights. One of my friends came back and fought well enough with 550 gear score in his solo queue. To make your life in PvP a little bit easier, I would recommend buying cheap 2 perk gear with Resilient and either Elemental Aversion or Freedom. No matter how you get your Aether Salt, I would recommend holding onto at least most of it, since it could be much more useful in the expansion. According to Jason, who has done a ton of PvP tracks, you're also meant to be able to store the PvP track XP, so you might get a lot of good gear at once in the expansion if you don't buy anything on the track. However, this is incredibly buggy according to him, so this might not work out. Choose for yourself if you want to gamble here. 
Quite a few new weapons have been released since launch, so you may need to farm some weapon mastery. The best place, especially if you're solo in my opinion to do this, is the south of Great Cleave. Here you can kill some mobs and get some decent XP from that alone, but then eventually Thorb spawns and gives you a ton of extra weapon XP. It is worth noting that especially the tail end of leveling weapons will be improved in the expansion. They said leveling is around 30% faster and especially the levels from 15 to 20 for weapon mastery will be a lot faster. So if you want to use a weapon in the expansion you could for example just level it to 15 and then do the rest after when it's a lot quicker. Elite chest runs by the way are also a decent way to get some quick and easy weapon XP with minimal effort. If you want to make any kind of weapon XP farm even faster, there are two times XP boosters for weapon XP. When used, these last for two hours. And how do you get those boosters? From the Season Pass. This is a new pass system, you probably know this from many other games. And this comes with various specific journey tasks that you can do, but also with activity cards. Both of these progress your season rewards, which are a variety of different resources, skins, materials and the aforementioned boosters. Even if you're not aiming to finish the whole pass, I would highly recommend occasionally checking your activity cards and flipping them whenever you have 3 to 4 stamps completed. That way you can get consistent progress and rewards while doing other things. Also this season the free track contains some transmog tokens, which I know a lot of people like. Gypsum is a complicated topic, because we don't know what will happen with it in the expansion. It can be gained from various different things in the game, like PvP, Gathering, PvE, so it's a very flexible resource in general, it was previously used to increase your expertise or umbral shards, both of which no longer exist. The gypsum system is very much woven into the fabric of a lot of new world activities, so I would be surprised if they are planning to remove it entirely, especially because it's also an incentive for many events. But since we don't know how useful they will still be, it also doesn't make sense for me to recommend you to do a lot of gypsum farming. For now I would say just hold on to everything gypsum related in its rawest form, so don't even turn things into gypsum orbs unless you have to, and we'll see what happens with all that stuff. If you want to farm extra gypsum while doing other things, then I would recommend crafting topaz potions and also gathering some resources around you because typically, depending on what event is going on, those resources will give you some extra bags with gypsum in them. But again, if any of that will be useful is unclear. While doing many activities in the game you get various caches, for example you get invasion caches or outpost rush caches and so on. And one question that is often asked in that context is if they should be opened now or kept for the expansion. The information that I can give you in that context is that most of these caches are level locked to 60, so the rewards will not have significant value after the expansion. Some are not, like the Outpost Rash caches, and have been confirmed to still not provide you with better gear immediately. Outpost Rush caches that you get after the expansion obviously will eventually have higher gear score, but the ones that you collected beforehand will not suddenly give you best in slot gear. On the other hand, it is not unusual for the devs to add new resources to these caches, for example craft mods. So unless you need anything from these caches right now, it could still be worth holding onto them until the expansion. Yet another thing worth paying attention to are the faction missions. You want to do them in a high level zone, a max level zone ideally, because you get higher rewards there. The first three faction missions per day give you a massively boosted reward, especially in terms of gold and faction tokens. It has been confirmed that there will be a new faction tier, so it can absolutely be worth stocking up on tokens so you can get gear from that tier very quickly. Additionally, you can buy caches for faction tokens with the same resources that I talked about in the gathering section, the unusual, strange and abnormal resources, so you can get extra gathering XP that way. I'll make a separate video with a more detailed comparison for those in the future. If you want to experience the raids before they get easier with the expansion, then you can do that via the recruitment chat. You'll often find people putting groups together for the hatchery and 600 gear score isn't really required here, this is fairly easy. The Sandworm raid is a lot more challenging, so you'd have to find a very benevolent group to maybe get you in there with the questline gear, but it's fairly unlikely. Now you know a lot of things about what you can do before the expansion, but what you don't know yet is what you should build at the moment for different weapons. I will make a guide video for that that will primarily focus on melee weapons in the near future, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Also, if you want to get notified of other videos like the upcoming trading tips. If this video was helpful to you, then pressing the like button would help me a lot. If you want to support me further, you can do so on Patreon, where I post early trading tips for the expansion all the time, thanks to my patrons whose names you can see right here that already support me there. And thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.